You know, uh, the message is that we are, we, with all the stresses in this world, many stresses, right? Um, we have to show love. We didn't talk about love today. Kindness. We have to be the examples of love and kindness and spread the message out there. There's so much, there's so much to be hopeful about. And I, I refuse to be hopeless. The tragedies that are happening uh, in our country, in our state, We can't just accept them. And we have to have hope. And we have to put action, as Rodney said, behind this. And uh, Mr. Boo recognized the young people that are here. This is what it's, it's really about. It's about all of us. But we want something for them. We want them to be safe. We want them to know love and kindness. We want them to spread the word to their peers and be the examples and grow and have opportunity. That's what it's all about. And it can't be just one group. It's all of us. It's every single one of us that contributes to making this world, our state, just a better place, our nation, a better place. And so many times we're not talking about love and kindness. Let's spread it. Let's understand what it is as we move out of this COVID, and we move past COVID and come back out into the world, we have to spread that love and kindness with each other. It starts with ourselves, and it goes out to each other. Recognize, see the young people. See the people that, are, that you come in contact, see them. Let them know that you love them. And show them kindness. And let that spread and let it ring out to the rest of this country. Let it ring out to the state. It's so important. Um, I, I think I have just about everyone here. We, the people that are standing here are people that have supported the programs um, throughout this state, throughout the nonviolence initiatives. There are people that come here every single day and connect with our young people. We need more of it. And we can't. I asked the media to, to really show the goodness in this world, the goodness in this state. Not just when something happens that is violent. Speak to the kindness. Tell stories of kindness. Tell, tell the stories that really matter, that make a difference in our country, in our state. Tell those stories. They're important stories, and I promise you they'll spread. They'll spread out. And maybe, and maybe we'll see that hope that we all, we, we wish for, maybe we'll see it in abundance. Uh, Father Ray, I, it seems like you want to say something, Father Ray. You do? Father Ray's walking up to the mic. <laughs> I just want to remember that all of us remember that the first principle of nonviolence, Martin Luther King's principles, is nonviolence is not for cowards. It's a way of life for courageous people. And all of us have to be courageous in our effort against violence and prejudice. Thank you. All right, I'd like to bring Diana Gollanton uh, from 
Well, first I'd like to acknowledge Moms, the man action that's here. I'd like to acknowledge Toby Ayers from the Rhode Island uh, Communities Coalition Against Violence. And uh, so I want to introduce Diana Gollinton, who has a few words to say. Good evening, and thank you, everyone. As he said, my name is Diana Gollington. I am a survivor of gun violence, and I am a board member for the Rhode Island Coalition Against Gun Violence. Before we even have the chance to express our condolences to the, the victims, families, and individuals from the community in Buffalo, where a white supremacist gunman in military gear killed 10 black individuals and injured three others. We had another shooting in downtown Milwaukee that left 17 people. One died at the hands of a gunman in a church in suburban Southern California. We're exhausted. We're heartbroken. Any life lost to gun violence is a tragedy. But we are particularly, particularly disturbed by the racially motivated murder of the black Americans in Buffalo. This is exactly the kind of white supremacist terrorist violence we have been warning Rhode Island lawmakers that our state is vulnerable. As reported by the Providence Journal in March, there has been a traumatic increase in white supremacist activity in Rhode Island. Over the past two years, blacks, Jewish, Muslims, non-white immigrants, and LGBTQ communities have suffered at the hands of these fanatics. No one law can prevent these types of actions, but we are asking you today. We know that we continue to say that our thoughts and prayers are with these families. But we want to tell you today that we're tired of that. We're tired of hearing that our thoughts and prayers are with you. And as an advocate in this community, and as a mother who lost a child to gun violence, I'm tired. I no longer want to hear our thoughts and prayers are with us. I want you to take action and stand up as a community, stand up as a person, stand up as an individual, and understand that Buffalo is just right around the corner. We are non-existent from being the next target. We are non-existent from enduring racism. So as I said, as a community, please stand up and please understand no more thoughts, no more prayers are with you. Take action. Yes, ma'am. We should all be saying never again. Uh, I have uh, Morris, could you come, come down for a moment, please, from the African Alliance, um, Oasis, and to say a few words as well. Salam alaikum, everybody. Uh, which means uh, I mean to say that uh, peace be unto you. I'm a Muslim. Uh, I am an immigrant. Uh, migrated to Rhoda 40 something years ago. Uh, this is a very loving uh, state for us. Uh, but with what happened in Buffalo, uh, this is not a third world country. Uh, this is a loving country. We need to get along. We need to work together. Uh, they keep saying it takes a village. It's not just about white, black, and different. It's all of us. We need to collectively find a way to continue to work together. And we keep saying it that uh, charity begins at home. Where this gentleman came from or this kid came from, it has something to do with the home. I don't think uh, this individual, you know, operate uh, just by himself. Parents need to do their job. They are not doing their job. We need to do our job. Working with these young folks, this youth, I know it's not easy, but we need to collectively work together to spend time with 
youth. We're not spending enough time with them. They are spending most of the time on the social media. Parents are not talking to their kids, and that is why we are having this kind of result. So for me and you, we have plenty of work to do, you know, to change the course of this crisis in our nation. Um, may Almighty Allah continue to protect the family that the loved one, may Almighty Allah grant them, you know, into paradise and be with the family, you know, that uh, they left behind. It is so saddening, unheard of, for this continuation of crisis with God. And we are not paying attention to this. We need to do something, and we need to continue to do something. Like I said, it takes a village. We need to get along. We need to work together. I think Rhode Island, you know, can be an example of all these things to key or to create an, uh, a peaceful environment where all of us can work with our leaders to find a common solutions to our problem. Thank you. Uh, we have our friend from Tides, uh, just many organizations, as I said. So uh, we're going to conclude this. Uh, I want to thank, on behalf of the Institute and the Institute staff, um, the outreach workers are here, intervention services, victims advocates, uh, they're here. And um, so thank you for all the work that you do every single day. Our nonviolence, uh, Father Ray said it. Um, the change has to come through that. Nonviolence, the language of nonviolence, the love of nonviolence, um, the components, the steps and principles of nonviolence are so important in, into, uh, in today's uh, climate right now. So I want to thank everybody from law enforcement, the fire department, and all our partners, uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Thank you for, for being here. Um, we have a lot of work to do, um, and again, there's hope, and I don't want people to be hopeless about what this is. We have to have hope, and we have to get up every day and do the work that needs to be done collectively to really move the needle uh, around hatred, around, around white supremacy, and we have to speak the language of love and kindness. So thank you very much for being here.